Today, we're going to tour the Lightbright compound. I'm Justin. And I'm Brittany. And I'm Kevin. AKA Lightbright, which is also the name of our YouTube channel. Which we'll link down below. But this YouTube channel is Hoosman Bros. And before we go too much further, please subscribe. Now, we normally do garage tours, but today we're doing a compound tour here in beautiful Utah with wonderful Lightbright. And we are in the boneyard because if you're an off-road person, you break things a lot, Stuff right? breaks. All the time. Okay, good. So if you would, Give us a tour of what's broken. We'll start here. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So again, we call this the boneyard because these are essentially, not that every vehicle on our property, I know they're saying garage tour, not necessarily the case. This is more of a property tour because total, I think we have about 25 vehicles currently on the property. Not all of them are broken. A lot of them though have stuff they're waiting to be worked on. Uh, this is just where a lot of the kind of down vehicles tend to get parked. So first up, we've got a new Jeep Gladiator. Not necessarily broken, however, this does belong to a uh, friend of our fa fabricator mechanic. They're doing a lot of kind of prototype stuff to this. Um, I know they're looking at frame chopping it. They're doing stuff that we don't quite have the time for right now, and you'll see why later. There's a few other projects that have taken priority on the property, uh, and you'll kind of see why, because as we move along, this right here is the stepchild. I recognize this one. Yeah. You should, this was, this is kind of light bright's bread and butter. This is our YouTube channel's bread and butter. And it's what got us really into our video making lifestyle. And the stepchild is again, it's a 2018 yeah, it's Jeep a, Wrangler it's JL. Old now. It's old now. Old now. <laughs> um, but right now she, she's very much not a Jeep anymore. Almost nothing on this Jeep has not been modified or touched. Just the body panels. Are... Yeah, body. the body itself is probably the only thing that is still fast. So if this was our home. This was yeah. what we lived out of for three plus years. Yeah, so before we moved here to Utah for about three and a half years at the very beginning of our YouTube channel, by choice, we traveled all over the country living out of this Jeep. And it was absolutely amazing. Not that we don't love it here, but the simplicity of it was pretty fantastic. It wasn't fantastic for me because you guys made me learn how to cover these things yeah. from an insurance yeah. perspective. I, mean, I remember Kevin called me, hey, we got a fridge. What do I do? Yeah. 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 I, wanted, I wanted homeowners to share tonics because right. we lived out of it. No. Absolutely. So this one taught me a lot too, and I think it taught you a bunch. Now, I love this one. Tell me about this little thing over here. Yeah. So this is a Suzuki Jimny, and this is actually pretty new. Okay. to the uh, light bright garage to our fleet of vehicles. This thing is sick. We love driving it around here because it's absolutely terrifying. I'm sure. But I will say uh, at the moment it is in the boneyard because unfortunately it does have a blown head gasket. It's a, it's a little turbocharged engine, like 1.3 liter. It's, it's, it's real small it's... motor turbocharged and um, it's old, but it's really cute if you look inside. So Kevin, I'd like to see you inside it because that looks a little small for you. No, no, no. I mean, it's it's okay. It's roomier than you think there's it a, is. There's a back seat, and I can <laughs> fit back there. Here, we'll do that. Here, you drive. You chauffeur me. You gotta get we'll back there like... first. <laughs> now, this might be worth the cost of the whole video. Hang it on. doesn't look like it has any room, but I, I. <laughs> For a tiny, tiny essential K car is kind of what it reminds me of. Uh, it's decently roomy, but again, it's one of the funnest cars on the property because it is absolutely terrifying to drive on the road. It's Utah, most of the highways are 80 miles an hour. This does not do 80. It doesn't, unless you're going downhill, this does not do 80 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> the unfortunate side is, again, JDM, Japanese. We do have to wait for the parts from Japan, so that's what this is doing. It's just waiting at the moment. But we also have this Land Rover. Now, I know you guys did well. I didn't know you did this well. We did not. Uh, this is not ours because we can't afford an old Land Rover. Why? Because it's perpetually broken. I don't think any of us can. This is one of the this is one of the cars that I would like the most, but <laughs> I am not I am not wealthy enough to bother with it. But Neither I love are we. These. I think they're super <laughs> cool. So this this again, this is a friend of our mechanic fabricator. Uh, he's getting some stuff fixed up. This one is actually broken, broken. I have no idea why or how. Um, but it's Land Rover, so it could be everything all at once, honestly. Exactly. Yep. Now, what is this one? So this is a JK. So this is an older Jeep. Uh, belongs to a friend of ours, Aaron Losey, who actually runs Lone Star Drift down in Texas. So he brought it to us, A, because the wheeling up here is quite a bit better than some of the wheeling down in Texas. And he had a few modifications he wanted to get done to it. And then also he asked if he could just essentially store it here. So anytime he wanted to really go wheeling, he could just fly in, grab it. Actually, what we're doing for him, because he got me into drifting and he yeah. actually got me into off-roading, 
um, is where we fixed it up and he's never been on the Rubicon. He's been wheeling his whole life and he's a few never years older than me. Never once been on the Rubicon he's, Trail. He's always wanted to do the Rubicon. So this summer, we're gonna load up the F450 here and I've got my tandem trailer over okay. there and we're gonna put our Jeep and his Jeep and I'm gonna take it up there and he's just gonna fly in get to wheel the Rubicon and then fly home. Nice. VIP so I'm gonna, service because yeah. nice people. He's, he's, he's one of my best friends. So he is, he is. that's kind of that. I was going to buy some land out here. Now I'm just going to buy a Jeep and store it. <laughs> yeah. Please don't. <laughs> Please don't. We're out of room. I know. <laughs> so now we've seen the boneyard, but I see some things that are covered up. Yep. And I know we're going to get this out in a video, subscribe, that we're going to do tomorrow when okay. you guys show me about off-roading. But tell me about this thing. What is this? So this is the side chick. Uh, it is my buggy, it's on 42 inch tires, and it is pretty sick. So this is what I use to do a lot of our more extreme rock crawling. A lot of people think off-road and they think kind of fire roads, just basically a dirt road to get to and from a campsite. When we say we're off-roaders um, and we enjoy like off-roading, we aren't those people. We don't overland. We like to camp and occasionally we do, but for the most part, the stuff that we do is the stuff that terrifies the living hell out of just about everyone else. We're doing obstacles, especially in this, but also in our Jeep Wranglers, that most people would never imagine a vehicle could even put tires on. And this will take you guys out tomorrow. Uh, stay tuned in a future video for that to give you guys kind of a little more of an idea of when we say off-road, what we mean. But for today, we are gonna leave this covered. Instead, we're gonna keep walking. We're gonna show you some of the other stuff we have on the other side of the property. Are we ready to stop right here and talk about these? Not yet. Uh, okay. We're going to take you to the back of the property first, show you some more broken stuff, and then we'll come back to the front, this roundabout here, where all of the really cool goodies are. Excellent. For all the stuff that runs. All the stuff that runs on here. And the 32. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're back here in your uh, back 40. Is that what you called it? Yeah, right? kind of the back 40. Much. So nice little creek back here. We've got mm -hmm. more cars. So tell me what we have here. Okay, these do run. This is a okay. CJ that our mechanic help redo and build for a customer slash friend of ours. Okay. Um, this one's pretty wild. This one's a rock crawler. So it's it's not really a Jeep anymore. It still has a Jeep body, okay. but the whole frame and everything's been redone. We call redone. it a juggy. Yeah, a, ju a Jeep buggy. Okay. So it's kind of right in between. See, so that one's, that one's pretty cool. Every, not powder coated, the non-skid. Yeah, so all of his vehicles are orange. Okay. He has a Hummer. He's got a little rock bouncer. He's him, him and orange are just, that's what they are. Okay. It's, it's all orange. So this one does run. Okay. This one is our mechanic fabricator. This is another Land Rover. I don't know how he affords this. Do broken Land Rovers multiply? Yeah, yeah. So he's he's actually uh, rebuilding the motor on this. He's okay. got a motor inside that he's rebuilding. Um, is and he then, doing the, the original Rover V8 or is he doing he something is. different? He is, yeah, but yeah. He, he pinned the sleeves and the blocks. I guess that's a problem, the sleeves yeah. drop out. Um, he put a cam in it, he's putting bigger injectors in it. So he's trying to, he was gonna do an LS, but the LS went into the Jeep in the in the shop oh, which instead, we'll also show you in which a we'll show you. <laughs> Very good. Um, and then we have this cool Unimog. Okay. So this is a Mercedes Unimog. This is fantastic. It's kind of a hot mess. The person that we got it from converted it to propane, and it starts and it drives and it sort of runs, but not really. Not really. If you hit the throttle, it just backfires and pops and sometimes, but it will just idle forward and run. Um, so we haven't gotten into that yet. And so what are you going to do with it? Do you think? Chris wants to LS swap it. No. I want to just get it running again. <laughs> with LP or with regular? No, I think we'll go regular. I don't know. I've never had an LP vehicle. It's an interesting idea. Right? Like it's because it, you can have it upside down and inside out. Right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't always matter. deliver fuel instead right. of having a carburetor and a gas tank. So I don't know. Maybe we'll try to get it running on that and see how that goes. But I don't know how fast you can drive something. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like I want to be able to drive it down the road at least at 45 miles an hour. Right. Because off-road fast is not important necessarily. Not yeah. for the no, not but for this. But it's getting there that's the problem. But this would be fun out just twisting it up and seeing what it'll do. Because oh, these yeah. are supposed to be absolutely amazing off-road. But it's a it's a hot mess and it's been sitting here for a year and so a half. This is another car of yours that doesn't run. Yeah, well, well it starts. Technically it <laughs> starts, but yeah. But as you can see, again, there's a lot of <laughs> projects on right. the property, and so. You prioritize stuff, right? Yeah. So you guys collect broken cars. Do you collect anything else? You, we, just for the record, we do. <laughs> but we didn't used to collect broken cars. All of our cars used to run until we had a property and a shop. Now we do collect broken cars along with... Well, along with this container here. Um, we, have, wow. we have tires for all of our vehicles. Extra tires for all of our vehicles. So uh, we're a big, big proponent of need, of Nido. Of Nido. <laughs> So most of these are all Nitto. Um, we've got 40 inch tires, 38 inch tires, 37 inch tires, 35 inch side-by-side -side tires. 
Yeah, everything. A lot um, of vehicles mean you need a lot of tires. You bet. Basically. Yeah, and they're very hard to come by nowadays. Are they? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't had to big, buy tires big, for a while. Big so. tires, 40s, 38s, they're very hard to come by. So for the past two years, I've kind of just squirreled them away. When just kind of squirreled them away. We just get them and kind of keep stacking them because so, we, we do really hard core stuff. And you, we, don't, we haven't cut a sidewall yet, but we go through them pretty quickly. Sure. Now, I love the smell of tires. Tell me you come out here and just sit in here. <laughs> you can, yeah. <laughs> it's like the smell of race gas. Right, right. We won't now, go to that one, though. <laughs> I noticed this one, and I was telling you guys about this when we did our pre-walk around. This is a Scout 1, right? Yes. Yep. So I had one of these. This was my first car, and I actually broke my teeth out in a front-end collision on this car. I ran into a guy who was parked in the street. Not this specific Not one. Not this one. Uh, <laughs> mine, was, mine was much shorter when I was done with it. Oh, man. So how long have sad. you guys had this one? This, I have no idea about this thing. This is another one of Chris's. Which, our mechanics. Our mechanics. Okay. It's one of his friends. It's one he moved in that he showed up with. And um, he's slowly done work on it as he has the time. He's been more pulling it apart than but, putting it together. Yeah, but that's yeah. True. <laughs> Just kind of getting everything down. He loves to go down to bare really? nothing from and scratch. then build from the ground up. And now see what's happening on your property is why I probably won't be allowed to buy a property out here in the country. Well, <laughs> this is all, once this is done, the 32's done, the Unimog's, that one, once all that's done, like no more big, no, no more having 10 projects at a time. Okay. Right? Well, let's walk through and see what other projects Okay, let's see what we got. So now, I've known you guys for a long time. Mm -hmm. Back when we were doing parking lot meets and, and looking at each other's cars and not really <laughs> doing anything. So now you're here. And you're, I would call you big YouTube stars, right? I mean. I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, this, is, this is a little grom. Brittany wouldn't let me own a motorcycle when we got married. She okay. said no more motorcycles. This is the closest he's allowed to get to one. So she let me have a little 125. And it's actually hers. Now it's mine. <laughs> Very nice. So I don't have a motorcycle. That was the one thing. She said, if I marry you, no more motorcycles. <laughs> uh, to be a widow. Yeah, there, there you go. So do you have any advice for those people that want to become YouTube stars? What's the secret? So here's what I do in the interview part is, yeah. what is your advice to the world? We've had a lot of really wealthy guys say, show up, be open, do the thing. So what's the advice that you want to give to the folks that want to get to where you're at? Dedication. That's the number one thing. Um, a lot of people go into it expecting it to be easy or expecting it to happen quickly. And we've known people where it took years for them to finally have that one break, that one yeah. video that went viral or that one thing that kind of put them on the map. Or them just making a namesake in, in the area they want to be in, right? So you try and try and try, but you can't do two videos, three videos, five videos. You have to do years of videos possibly. And events. And, 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 and events and get Building your name out there where people are like, oh wait, what this person's saying or what they're doing is actually important or I can trust what they're saying. We got, I got lucky at the beginning because the new Jeep body style had just come out. We just went and bought it and- we moved to Colorado. When you live in Colorado, it's like a law. You have to own either a Jeep or, or a Subaru. Yeah, pretty we much. We picked a Jeep. <laughs> you guys don't strike me as Subaru. Really. No, no. So, so we kind of got lucky in that respect because it is timing, just everything in life, right? We right. never really say no to anything or anyone. We kind of do as much as we can. And that's kind of, I think, what's catapulted us is because I'm constantly, we're never home. We have this place. We've had this place for two years. We're maybe home two to three months out of the year. Yeah. Really? We're yeah. on the road nine months out of we the year. We rarely say no to an opportunity. And Good. it's part of that's just who we are. And we love making sure that we, we both suffer from FOMO, fear of missing out. <laughs> and so it's beneficial to our YouTube channel because we're always doing new right. and crazy adventures. And stuff. not everything works out. We go yeah. do stuff. We're like, oh my God, why do I do idea. that? I'll never do that again. <laughs> but who knows? I might have met someone in the right. process who had a door to open for something. Else. And so it just, everything kind of snowballs, but you can't do it sitting on your couch. You can't do it. Yeah. Can't do it part time. You can't do it yeah. part time. Yeah, you have to actually go do it. What's but it's that? hard. I said, I know you're trying, it is. Well, it's harder. It's way harder. Yeah, I mean, we're at, we're filming a day a week, you know, yep. and so that's something, right? Yeah. My problem right. is I have another business to run, you yep. know? So. Right. So we film three to four days a week, right? We right. do two videos a week. We do every Wednesday, every Sunday. Is it for, for we years, twice a week, we basically. used to do four to five a week. Then we dropped down to three a week and it just, as the more you do, the less sustainable that is. Right. So we you were, burn out quicker. you burn out quicker. So then we found out, all right, Sunday and Wednesday, Sunday and Wednesday. So every one of our subscribers knows Sunday and Wednesday. Right. Yep. It's just what so it is. So for me, to be fair, YouTube is just an excuse to hang out with friends with cool stuff. Right? <laughs> there you go. What's happening over here? Hey, Chris, yeah. what's happening over there? <laughs> here, over here. <laughs> 
<laughs> the mic's the mic's on me, so we're gonna get close. So this is this is Chris, by the way. Chris is our main mechanic fabricator, know it all. He's the one who's responsible for all the Land Rovers laying around. Yes, yeah, that too. And for all the, for all the for all the broken stuff that's not fixed. No, I know. He I, breaks it. He I breaks it. That's not fixed yet. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's the breaker. So we just made these cool little guys right here. So the, originally has square tail lights. Originally has square tail lights. But you put round because what are you we doing? Make, we have to make corners. And the old fuel filler used to be there, but we're probably gonna cut that out. So then I just made this. So now the tail light is the <laughs> fuel filler. Oh, very nice. So do you guys have any thoughts about creating products like this and having your own product lines? Ooh, no. No. <laughs> that sounds like way more work than what we already do. It's, it's, it's a one and done thing for me. Okay. <laughs> you just like solving yeah. the problem. So what motor is in this? It is a 2005 uh, Silverado 5.3 Gen 3 motor. LS. And when you're done with it, how many horsepower do you expect for it to have? It's right now, it's just stock. Just stock, okay. <laughs> no, it's got, I thought it had a Cayman stuff, no? Right now, it's just stock. <laughs> uh, no, no Cayman. We, we, we like each other, don't worry. It's, it doesn't get too weird. <laughs> no, so this thing was, this is, this is Beck's Jeep. Um, and it was just kind of a stockish Jeep, suspension, it's wheels and tires. A stock LJ. Chris decided to cut the oh, whole on, thing no, no. apart. Beck just uh -huh. wanted big axles and bigger tires. Oh, Chris said, no, 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 <laughs> let's tear it down to scratch. And again, like we said earlier, rebuild it My completely fault. from brand new. Like <laughs> frame all the way up, custom suspension, custom links, custom gas, custom everything. So much in the process, though, <laughs> from welding and fabrication and yeah. the whole nine, really. So. It's it's been a pretty yeah. insane process to watch them build this Jeep. Kevin, Kevin, <laughs> if you're wondering why he's bouncing around so much, he's on a microphone stand. I definitely need to buy a Jeep and just keep it here. No, that's no. easy. No. No. So now, can we see some other vehicles that work? Yeah, well, let's show you the ones that do work. Uh, Except for your Corvette. And by the way, this is a garage tour ostensibly, although most things aren't in the garage, as they said. This is a great shop here. Yeah. We tour a lot of these that are really yeah. just car museums. This is a great working shop. And, yeah. and I love to see all the parts. I love the smell of a shop. I can imagine spending quite a bit of time here. So they came up with this here to kind of block so we can lower this. So, but yeah, this is just a, a, a parts graveyard of just anything and everything. Yeah, can you get back there? Um, so it's kind of like in sections, like that's all of our, that's all of our like shocks uh, from Bill Stein. There's some Dynatrack, oh, those are old knuckles. And then it just kind of moves through. There's all like recovery gear. That's our Atlas that's going in the Jeep, in the, what is in the stepchild. So the Atlas is uh, your transfer case. Okay. It's so instead of just a- It's a selectable transfer case. So okay. um, for instance, my buggy essentially has one, which again, I'll show you next time okay. or tomorrow when we go wheeling. Um, but it basically allows you to individually select your axles. Right, so you can do front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, four wheel drive. Yep. So if sometimes you need to get on something and you don't you want the rear. Dig yeah. rear dig. Uh, there's, it gives you a lot more options when you're on insane rock obstacles yeah. to get you up. Yeah, and so just kind of, that's it. That's like the whole, each, each section is like a different vehicle right. of, of parts. So are um, these, a lot of these Spares for if you break it or parts for the next part of the build? Uh, all that is parts for the next part of the stepchild build. Okay. Uh, there's a set of axles out there. Um, there's a set of skid plates here, the Atlas. So all this is kind of for the stepchild when it Got comes it. in in like a month Okay. to have that like stepchild 3.0 done. But then, yeah, so each section, but some of them are replacement parts. I have okay. spare drive shafts and whatnot. Okay, very good. Yeah. Now let's go outside here. Okay, now we have another little Japanese K car here. Yeah. So this is a Mitsubishi mini truck, right-hand drive. Again, JDM import straight from Japan. Manual four-wheel drive. Manual four-wheel drive. Uh, it's honestly pretty sick, but we got it specifically for kind of the shop, as right. you can see. And we bought this and then we gifted it to Chris, actually, because he uses it the most. Um, it's kind of our junkyard truck, because there's a junkyard a bit up in town, okay. but like he'll essentially just putter this all the way there to dump stuff. These are our guys right here. Yeah, mini, mini trucks, trucks of Texas. Texas. They're in Dallas, right? They are, yeah. yeah. They're, they're Dallas, super cool dudes. So, Same place we got the Jimny. He, he actually gave us this. Really? He wanted Chris to build it. Then we were like, we'll do a giveaway. But then we get we get a lot of snow here. And Chris, Chris wanted a two-wheel drive. But instead, the four-wheel drive came in handy a lot of times because we have so much snow here, two-wheel drive would not have even been Wouldn't able have to managed. get out of the driveway. 
Um, so now it's just like the parts truck, the whatever. You can't you can't go through a tank of fuel in this thing. Really? Yeah. yeah like it's. it's is it, a, so is it a little dumb. three cylinder? Yeah, and, and it's it's well, we can't show you because it's right, right under so here, but it's bed. no turbo, no nothing. Yeah. Right. So it just kind of puts along up yeah. to like 45 miles an hour. -ish. All sides so. of the bed like fold down, right. so it makes it pretty cool. You'll see them sometimes. Well, we've done a video of it at the junkyard. They just throw it in reverse and like floor it as floored as this will go, <laughs> and then slam on the brakes and, and everything just, just, <laughs> just flies out. <laughs> yeah. so, so, tell me about the Audi. This doesn't seem in your wheelhouse. Uh, Again, it's not Chris wasn't having a lot of reliability luck with his Land Rover, so ah. we bought an Audi, which everyone knows was a great choice for reliability. That's about my level. I stopped driving a 20-year-old Jaguar and bought a 20-year-old Porsche. Hold on, hold on. But this is an S4, so it this is, is a 2.7 cool twin turbo manual. Yep. This oh, thing, that's a very this cool thing car. shits and gets. It really does. Oh, yeah, it's that's pretty a Those things move out. So we've got more over this way. Are we two running cars yet? We're going to save this one for later. So the, the Audi runs. The mini oh, the truck Audi runs. runs. Okay, the there mini you go. Truck all runs, right, yeah. All right. This one runs, but we'll we'll get back to her. So I'm going to make a guess on this one that this also doesn't belong to you because this doesn't seem like it's in your wheelhouse either. It does not. Don't get me wrong. Okay. I absolutely love classics. I think this thing is beautiful, but this is another one of the really big projects that Chris actually brought with him. <laughs> okay. Like the Scout uh, when he moved here, yeah. essentially. So. Oh, wow. You can see. It's got a little blower V8 in it. It's got Absolutely. a little blower in it with a little V8. I don't know what this is. It's an older V8, and I think right. he wants to upgrade to like an LS. Okay. LS kind of. Uh, platform. There's a lot that he wants to do again, one off, yeah. ground up stuff to this. We just haven't gotten around to it. Right. Yeah. Again, priorities. <laughs> yeah. I vote that you lift this one and take it on the trails. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty sick to see. Now, this is your drift car, right? This is. You'll have to forgive me for the, uh, the really <laughs> crappy paint marker, a uh, little paint job here. I did that in the course of the day. And the reason why, this is our third black. Corvette. So Kevin and I originally automotive enthusiasts. I come from like show cars. I have a Mark IV Jetta with a 12 valve VR6 in another garage. Um, but when I met Kevin, he got me really big into drifting and he's always been really big into it. We got rid of my 350Z that I competed with on the Netflix show Hyperdrive and we swapped Corvettes because C6 Corvettes make amazing drift cars. Uh, you have to do very little to them for them to perform extremely well on the track and extremely well going sideways. The downside is, is because of the off-roading, we weren't really drifting a lot. And because we weren't drifting a lot, we sold the 350Z. But then Drift Week, if anyone is familiar with drifting, or again, Lone Star Drift in Texas, Aaron Lowson puts on these events called Drift Week. Mm -hmm. They're not a week long. They're usually like two or three weeks long, but you hit tracks all over the country and just beat the crap out of your you vehicles. Have to drive on the road. Yeah, you have to drive. Oh, so it's like it's a like rally. Drag, like it's a like drift drag rally. week. Yeah. Okay. So it's like drag week where you have to go to the track, you get to drive and drift all weekend long or for a couple days, and then you have to drive your vehicle on road to the next track. And sometimes that can mean driving a few thousand miles in your drift car, which again, anyone who knows drift cars means they're not usually reliable enough for that. <laughs> so keeping it as like stock as possible was really good. So we bought a C6 okay. Corvette, and then right after Drift Week, or a couple months later, we sold it, because we're like, God, we never have time. We don't drift often enough to own this vehicle. The next Drift Week came around a few months later. Kevin wanted to go. We bought another C6 Corvette, and then drifted, and then ended up selling it, and until finally we landed on this. So this is actually a Z06. It's a C6 Z06, but I was sick and tired of showing up with just plain black Corvettes. So I painted some stuff on it, ignore it. It's a drift car. It's just, it's not necessarily, it's supposed to be a 30 footer, right? From 30 feet away, going right. like 40 miles an hour sideways. That's all it needs. Now you've been to Japan to go drifting, haven't you? We have. So actually on our honeymoon, Kevin and I went to Japan, bought a uh, JZX 100 and went to Ebisu, which is a track, uh, multiple tracks built into the side of a mountain in Japan. And basically spent two weeks just drifting our hearts away. It was, when we ended up loving it so much, we went back a second year and did it again. So yeah, we've been to Japan to drift. When I say we're like into motorsports, like right, like all of it, we're all of in it. all of it. Yeah. Um, I will say what's funny though is she cannot track drive. She can Ugh, drift. I hate it. She gets nauseous grip driving. Grip driving. Okay. So whether she's riding with me up. or driving, she actually gets nauseous, which I find going sideways. Funny. 100% yeah, fine. I don't, understand I don't that. mind it one bit, but for some reason, grip driving around a track, I just want to throw up. Like it makes me motion. I get motion sickness, and I've nothing has ever made me feel that way before. Yeah. But so this one's currently broken. It is. Okay. And the LS7's getting rebuilt. So I lost. I lost count. Can we see one Quick that's counting. not broken? Quick counting. We can. Yeah. <laughs> let's let's go to the Jeep first, because I know this is a special special thing. It is. Yeah. It's pretty sick. So what did this start out as? So this was 
a 2022 Jeep Wrangler 392. So this was a brand new 392 Rubicon that we bought at the dealership. We drove it straight 200 miles on it to America's Most Wanted 4x4, ripped out the brand new 392 engine, and instead we installed a Demon engine. Oh, wow. 840 horsepower factory Demon engine. Yeah, 840 horsepower to the crank in a Jeep Wrangler. It's ridiculous, it's dumb. You don't need this much power in a Jeep, but is it absolutely sick? Of course. It is probably the <laughs> raddest build that we own in terms of just like really cool. So this is like frame off, right? They pulled the body off, they cut the frame apart, um, and it has everything from hydro steering, coilovers, custom interior. Yeah, the interior is custom. It's got a transmission out of a track hawk. Yeah, it's got that, a, that really? comes with the big uh, 8, H, 8 HP 95. Yeah. I believe transmission. Um, it's got, you know, power running steps, it's got 40 inch tires and uh, forged wheels. I don't know how dirty it is right now. Is it's it dirty? Not, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. So it was the first one to come with uh, heated and cooled seat that we did. So cat skin. Has, we installed cat yeah. skins, but it was the first seat cover installation cat skins did that added both cooled and heated seats to a Jeep Wrangler. So it's, it's pretty sick. Um, again, we will be bringing this along right. with my buggy when we go off-roading tomorrow, right. so you can just, really just see like it. Just like you don't like grip driving, I don't like things like this. So this is going to be an adventure for <laughs> oh, me tomorrow. Well, right. this thing will take through the dunes. Like you'll, you right. want to hear this. I'm telling you, you want to hear it. We're not going to start it right oh, no, now. I'm, That's going to be on probably one of the next videos. But you want to hear this. You've never heard a vehicle scream it's the way this thing so screams. Wild. So this has a lot of power, right? Yeah. Yes. Is it still? <sighs> I know it's not necessary for jeeping. Is it still fairly capable to do the things you guys Absolutely. like to do? Yeah. We just drove yeah. it to Florida and back. Right. It's yep. 2,400 miles each way. Okay. Yeah. But we took it to Moab uh, for Easter okay. Jeep Safari. Yeah. It's totally capable of rock crawling. Right. We wouldn't do probably as extreme of trails as we would like in the other, the stepchild. Which and the is, things that are built we, for that. Again, the, well, step, the, the stepchild, we we enjoy beating the crap out of it, but right. this one's this is so pretty. nice. Yeah. <laughs> it's a special, special truck. Yeah, we, we kind of don't want to do any damage to her, at least not as much damage as like we're used to doing when we rock car. And what's, what's really crazy is all these broken cars and all these cars that do run that, will, that we're showing you sort of, other than Chris's stuff, is all insured right. through you guys. Absolutely. So yeah. like this was a $225,000 and like $25,000 build. build. Like if Be you were to buy one of these. The right. Yeah. So America's Most Wanted sells these ready to go. Uh, at every stage from about 165000 to $225,000. They also do like Hellcat swaps, yeah. uh, you know, Hemi yeah. swaps. Uh, the stepchild has a 426 stroker engine in it from yeah. America's Most Wanted. So this one's just a little too nice to do the crazy stuff. I, I have the stepchild for that. Very good. Yeah. So what else do you have over here? Well, first I see this Bronco. Tell me about your Bronco. So this is a brand new Bronco Raptor from Ford. Um, we did have a Bronco Badlands with a Sasquatch package prior to this. Hated it. Why? Oh my God, it was garbage. I think part of the reason is because it's right out of COVID and I think Ford was struggling with maybe some quality control issues. Okay. And ours had a lot of quality everything control creaked, issues. Everything everything rattled, rattled, everything felt like crap. No, no it had paint, matched. it had paint issues, like paint spots well, on it's it. It's hard to build cars from home well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like. yeah. And so basically we ended up getting, an, and also the, the base Bronco, it has a lot of weaker steering and weaker suspension right. uh, and driving components versus the Bronco Raptor. So we got rid of that, got the Bronco Raptor, love it. This Have thing you done is anything wild. to this one or is it fairly stock? Um, it's got an aftermarket exhaust on it. Um, it Magnum just point. got, yeah. yeah, it just got a brand new all billet aluminum steering rack from 74 Weld. So basically taking away any potential weak points we so could experience. The weak points is the, the tie, tie rods, rods break and then it snaps the end of the rack off. Yep, okay. and then you can take out CDs and stuff like that as yeah. well. So we're preventative measures. We right. never, we have yet to break anything on it, okay. but we want to make sure that we don't because we do beat the crap out of this. Uh, okay more high speed off-road than rock crawling. Although we have taken this on some pretty extreme rock crawl trails as well, just to prove that it can. So your verdict on the Raptor, yes? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. 100%. Okay. As far as a stock vehicle, like from factory, it was weird because the Badland Sasquatch Bronco was one of my least favorite vehicles I've ever owned. owned. Yep. And this is probably the best factory off-road vehicle ever built. Like Fantastic. out of the box, Right. And our Jeep, our, our Jeep fans hate it when we say that, but <laughs> but if Overall. you plan on never modifying it, 
and you do like mild to moderate off-roading, this is more comfortable. We would pick it's this faster, over a Wrangler. It gets great fuel economy. I mean, well, not great fuel, comparatively. Comparatively. Um, well, you compared know. to a Hellcat, I'm sure. Well, yeah, yeah. compared to the Demon or the Hellcat. Yeah. But it just all around for on-road driving, off-road driving, high speed, rock crawling, it does all of it. And it's bigger inside and it, it just, more comfortable. everything about it is better. Yeah. If if you're not gonna touch it. Yeah. Excellent. So we I'll actually, buy one of these to park here. Yeah. We <laughs> recently, <laughs> You'll want to drive it everywhere I you know. go. Well, we recently took this, uh, again, if you follow our YouTube channel, we just took this to the Arctic Circle and back. We oh, drove it right. from Utah that, yeah. all the way up miles. to the most northernest part of Canada that you can possibly drive. We drove it on the Arctic Ocean, frozen, then drove it all the way to Anchorage, Alaska, and then all the way back home. It's almost 10,000 miles in two and a half weeks. And folks, I want you to know that I was fired up about driving 1,000 miles in a day to get here. So <laughs> 10,000 makes puts me to shame. <laughs> What's over here? Ooh, these are the baby babies, as okay, you can yeah, see. Okay, yeah, they get a special space. Yeah, they, they get the attached garage space. Okay. Yeah. So this is a, uh, not, I guess, new anymore, but newer. Uh, this is a Polaris Razor Pro R. Okay. And again, for any of our side-by-side -side, uh, people, you'll understand just how sick this razor is. As far as side-by-sides go, as far as ones that we drive, this thing right out of the box is such an incredibly capable side-by-side. Mm -hmm. -side. Like it's, it's literally a race car and people have driven them nearly stock, just adding like, you know, your protection stuff, your seats, your harnesses, a stronger roll cage, race them in off-road races and one. Really? just as they're set up. Like they're insanely capable. So is this a rock crawler rig or more of a sand duny type rig? It it can go on the rocks, but it's, it's more fun in like the desert. It's more fun on the sand dunes in the desert, high speed. So this is a go fast car. Oh, Think yeah. like the Baja 1000 okay. or Nora's. the Nora or- The Mint um, 400, if you've ever seen yeah, that movie. Yeah, the Mint 400. It, will it rock crawl? Yes. Um, but it's way more fun in the desert. Got yeah, it. it's, a, it's a strap your helmet on tight and hope you put don't your, die. Put your seatbelt on and I mean, you're talking whoops, three, four feet tall at 80, 90 miles an hour. Just skipping wow. across just, the top of it. Just them. not even, you can, it's, it's insane. So is this similar to the car that you got, or the car I say, but the thing that you guys had that you did the King of the Hammers in? Yeah, um, no. <laughs> right. It, so um, again, if you follow our YouTube channel, so we used to have a 4400 car called, uh, it's basically Ultra 4 Racing. It's one of the, the King of the Hammers. It's the hardest, single day off-road race in the world. Kevin and I raced it two years in a row and finished both years. Just finishing that race is, just That's getting enough, to the starting right? line is, is a lot, um, but finishing the race for never racing before is unheard yeah. of. Yeah, We might've been the two, we might've been the first people to ever show up two years in a row and finish it two years With in a row. With no your, prior experience. Your very first time. I wow. think we're the only people that have yeah. ever done that. Um, Possibly. But. It was a bomber chassis with solid axle. So it was a solid front rear axle. It went axle. fast, but it so hurt it's a rough speed. ride then, yeah. yeah. It's speed, but in the rocks, it we was insane. We dominated in the okay. rocks. Whereas this, again, it's IFS, so independent so, front yeah. suspension, independent um, suspension and independent yeah. rear suspension. So this is IFS IRS. This performs way better, way better in the desert through the whoops versus any solid axle is gonna perform significantly better in the rocks, Got it. essentially. Okay. Yeah. So I think we're done with off-road vehicles now. Now we're back into my wheelhouse where I like to be and we have these. And I know the Supra's yours, so why don't we start with that and tell me about your Supra. So this is a Mark V Supra. This is actually one of the launch editions. Okay. I don't remember what number it is, but it's one of the first 1500 that they released. Okay. It used to be red, obviously, not anymore. Right. What I absolutely love about these, and people hate on them because of the looks, we were kind of hit or miss at right. first when we got it. Uh, we weren't sure if we liked it. We got it for Kevin as a birthday gift. Okay. And then he ultimately decided he hated it because he didn't like the way he fit inside. It is a pretty small cockpit. Okay. I loved it. I okay. still love it. That's why it's now mine, essentially. Um, but this has probably less than five grand under the hood. And here, we're on 91 octane. Unfortunately, we used to live in Texas where they have E85 right. and you have all sorts of better fuels, 93 even. In Utah, unfortunately, you don't. We have 91. So this is detuned to 91 versus the old E45 and meth injection it used to be on. But even with the 91 octane tune, it is still equally as fast as the 4580 Talia that I bought Kevin to replace the Supra <laughs> for his birthday, the like following year or two. Last year. <laughs> last Very year. Very nice. We bought this last year. We bought that two years ago. So what is your favorite thing about this? The speed. And this thing, we're, we're automotive enthusiasts. Kevin and I do not discriminate when it comes to cars. You can, you, obviously we have just about a little bit of right. everything manufacturer wise. I'll joke, I'll call it a BMW. I don't care. Right. This thing is fast. 
and it is as fast and as tunable with almost no money put into it because Toyota partnered with BMW. It's pretty unique in that because with an E50 tune, if you just happen to mix and with methanol injection, it's a nine second car. So okay. we took it it's to- a, it's, a, it's a nine second car, her, yeah. We her. took it to a drag strip Ennis. shortly after, yeah, in Ennis, Texas, yeah. which is actually where we met originally. And I'd never drag raced before. And she it was, had no idea what she was doing. No idea how to never launch, yep. no idea how to do anything. And anything. we pulled up next to a, on the other side of me was a GTR. He probably okay. had about 50 grand under the hood. That's and what we, he said. Yeah. We, yeah, and we had talked to him beforehand. He's like, oh, you know, what are you hoping to pull? And I was like, at least in the tens. And he laughed at me. He's like, yeah, that's what everyone wants to do on their first try, kind of a thing. I pulled a 10. I got a 10 7, I think. 10 6, 10 7. At like on my first time drag miles. racing. Yeah. And, I was like, like, <laughs> and of course, yeah. <laughs> and then he comes back later. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's done to this? Yeah, what is it? Yeah. We're like nothing, like just a tune, a downpipe. Yeah. Like this thing some tire. is it's insanely fast and it's just this side of like terrifying. Okay. Because of how <laughs> torquey it is. It weirdly enough, not nearly as terrifying as the Ferrari. The Ferrari just plants. This doesn't necessarily plant as well. So it gets a, you can get a little squirrely in it, which I love. Yeah. All right, Kevin, now I know this one is your car. Dream car, yes. So tell me I, a little bit about it. I have no idea how we got here so quickly. Um, I mean, it's been years, but it's crazy to own like something I've just Always dreamed like of. dreamed never of, really would. thinking I'll never have, like there's no way. So it's crazy to have everything we've shown you where, uh, yeah, again, we were like Four literally ra we were rags or riches. Yeah. And I'm talking yeah. like making two grand a month living out of a Jeep Right. to all of this, which is mind blowing. But this is a 2010. First year they made the 458. Okay. I looked and looked because I was, most of them had six, seven, eight owners. Right. Because they mostly get leased for a year or two and they yep. go, and those people don't care about cars. Being an enthusiast, I didn't want a seven or eight owner car right. where people just start in it, like start it, get it up and just drive the piss out of it and don't care. This is a one owner car. Very nice. So one owner, 15,000 miles, um, and it has almost every option you could get a full carbon interior, all Alcantara headliner and um, and, and floor the and the floor seats. Is Alcantara. Yeah, the floor is Alcantara, the floor mats are Alcantara, the seats are the race carbon seats. So right. everything's carbon, everything's Alcantara. Um, it has the front nose lift. It, it just, it, it literally had everything. The biggest build I could find and a one owner, which was freaking awesome. But the best part about it is the noise. Okay. The, the noise you, of this. You did, kind of. Okay, so the 458 sounds phenomenal right. from the factory, but I found a company called Klein and they make Inconel exhaust. Now Inconel is what Formula One uses. Um, it is almost as light as titanium, but as strong as stainless. Yeah. The problem is all, everybody goes to titanium on this right. and titanium is brittle and the vibrations cause the hangers to like crack and rip and you either have to replace it or try to re-weld re it. Um, so Inconel is kind of the best of everything, except- It's really expensive. It's like $20,000. <laughs> really? So the exhaust on this alone was 20 grand. And you gotta think the motor's in the back. So it's right. literally, so it's, like three it's literally headers. Uh, we decatted it. So yeah. it's just a straight right. pipe. And then there's no mufflers. There's no nothing. 20 grand for just like Pipes. three, four foot of pipe. <laughs> very so nice. it's, it's very, and it come, it, it comes from overseas somewhere. I forget where it was at, but you have to have a special machine that can bend and canal. It, it's a very special setup, right, you know, right. which is why well, Formula One uses after it. After you built it up like that, I think you better start it for us. Uh, you I, guys do so want to hear it. We'll let you start it and then we'll wrap this video up. Thanks so much everybody for joining us. Please, we're going to link to Lightbright's channel down below. Yeah. Go follow them. Obviously, they're doing fun stuff aside from collecting cars and tires. So <laughs> go, go check them out. Um, thanks so much for having us over. Yeah, I'm looking sure. really, uh, I won't say I'm looking forward to it, but I, I'm going to do my best to enjoy going off road with You'll you guys tomorrow. You'll be fine. Really great. You, Not I haven't own. flipped a vehicle yet. If for, well, yet. I have. Yet. Uh, oh, good. Well, but that's you're great. also riding with me in the buggy, which is what I've flipped. So excellent, excellent. So, <laughs> thanks so much for watching. Please go subscribe to them. <laughs> subscribe to us down below, and we're going to end this with Kevin kicking off this expensive exhaust on his four five. With the greatest eargasm you've ever heard. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I had the wrong impression of what off-roading was like.